tell you what, I've seen a lot more people chasing brook trout and trying to get into Class A water and back in off the grid yeah, I can do that. than what I used to see. Like, That's because blue lining has become so popular. Right, like we used to own this place. Yeah. Like we could fish from the swimming hole down there where we came across the bridge where they stopped stocking from there up. Mm -hmm. This place was untouched. Mm -hmm. Nobody fished it. And now, now, three, four trucks, vehicles coming up through. And it, it's consistently the same guy. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you want some young eyes on that? No, there? no, that's okay. <laughs> well, you're talking to Mr. Stubborn here. Right? Uh, I know. The ranting angle? Yeah. yeah. Just had to offer. I knew you wouldn't take. I would say there's probably an 18 inch brown in here somewhere. I would say there's probably one. This is the biggest fish that I've caught consistently. Yeah, um, yeah pretty good fish. But I would think there's probably somewhere throughout the fishery, especially the lower end. Mm -hmm. Like if they didn't stock that lower end, yeah. I think that would be substantially better. I really wish. I hope that that goes through. To me, versatility is just everything. Mm -hmm. That's what I preach. Yep. I mean, I get the whole, I just want a Euro nymph concept. I get it because it's easy to start there. See, I for don't new, get it. new fishermen true. coming in. Like, I, I understand that piece, but at some point, you got to progress beyond that. Well, here's the thing. I see, I see all these young people getting involved in fly fishing. As a result of their knowing someone in the competitive fly fishing field. Right. And so that's all they're that's all they're exposed to. Yep. And you ask them, can they cast? No. no. Can they fish anything else? Well, they're very. Uh, what I want to say, I won't say intimidated, but certainly you know lacking right. any kind of knowledge and experience in anything else. Yep. And so that doesn't really give them the opportunity to experience it all. Right. Because we're going to primarily be fishing subsurface. Yep. I'm actually going to set up with a drag rock. I mean, a uh, uh, drop shot. Okay. And fish a small one. I was going to bring my other system, and I thought, this wind gets in these woods. Yeah. Tight lining ain't no fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I mean, George and I have discussed this, but on one of his videos, He's fishing and it gets windy. Yeah. And he makes a statement, gee, I maybe I should switch to an indicator. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking, I wonder how many people caught. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey. Uh -huh. Lost.
You know, I wish people could see what you're doing and notice that there is no noticeable difference with regard to your connection with that line and leader when it comes to sag. It's all the same. And there's a reason for that. It's called tension as a result of weight subsurface. What it's all about. So many people don't ask the questions to understand why. Well, it's like I've said so many times, Jed. People can regurgitate what they've read or heard. These guys make the statement that um, the water, the current is always faster at the bottom than at the top. Well, oh. that's true a lot of times, but it's not true all the time. No. And then it doesn't always go the same way. No. You know, when you talk about the substrate slowing down that current, you better think about the sub substrate kicking it off to the left or to the right or who knows where. Right. But they don't talk about it. No, like you got to divide that water into three sections vertically yeah. as well not just looking at it from the top and oh that, that's so horizontal true. but looking yeah. at it vertically as well because yeah. if you've got a rock there you're creating yeah. a change in that current that's sub <clears throat> subsurface it's not necessarily going to show up on the top well i'm to the point now i tell people nymphing is a, is a game of hope and if that's when you're really raised eyes i don't know. what do you mean <laughs> you hope you get a good grip right because you have no idea and there's no way to know what that current's really doing to your drift on the, uh, toward the bottom. Yep. You're gonna go off to now, let me let me speculate where that fish might be. And since I can't really see the bottom, there are a couple of places there. Either on this side, right at the edge of the fast current, or over there on that side. Yep. He's usually, when the water's up, he's on this inside edge. Yep. Okay. If the water's down, he's tucked under that he's rock or that rock. on that side. That's what I really expect. Yep. And there's also some pretty good brook trout up through this as well. Yeah. But that brown, he kind of owns whatever place he wants to be yeah. in, and then all the brookies are everywhere else. And don't even begin to tell me how small it is. <laughs> I have a feeling you'll know here soon. I want to know how much you paid to be able to get out of that bush that many times. <laughs> don't have water. <laughs> no, it's not. That's called good fortune. That's all that is. <laughs> when stick and string comes in 